As a lot of you may know, we went to Eurobike recently and there was a lot of interesting things going on there. We got to meet with a lot of manufacturers that we have partnerships with. We got to meet a lot of new ones. And one thing is clear, the e-bike space is really continuing to grow. This video, I wanted to focus specifically on some of the innovations that I saw there relating to drivetrains. And for those of you who don't know, a drivetrain is similar to like a transmission in an automobile. You have a series of gears which will impact the ratio in which you deliver power. Generally speaking on a bicycle, you have the gears in the back and then you, you know, deliver power with the pedals and or a motor in the front, whereas in some cases there's a motor in the rear wheel. Now, most of these drivetrains will be specifically targeted around bikes that have motors in the center down by the pedals. There will be one what's considered a gearbox and that's in the center and that can be used with a rear hub motor, but most of these be used with a center drive motor. And for a lot of people, they're riding these e-bikes for greater distances. So it's really critical that you have a good drivetrain in these cases because you're delivering more power. Maintenance is a big concern. Now, traditional drivetrains are not really made to withstand some of the additional forces that electric bikes put out. Many of these new drivetrains are really built especially to be able to handle that additional torque. And then they also oftentimes have some added benefits like longer intervals between maintenance and that sort of thing. Another big trend we're seeing with the drivetrain technology is electronic shifting and even some automatic shifting, which is pretty cool. Now, I personally am primarily focused on electric bikes for transportation. Generally speaking, internally geared hubs are really well suited for that. And that's basically when the gears are inside of the hub of the bike as opposed to external gears, which a lot of people might be more familiar with, especially on like sport type bikes. Several years ago, there were a lot of manufacturers which were kind of exiting the space. I mean, Shimano and SRAM, who were two of the biggest players in the space, actually decided to cut some of the production of, of some of their internally geared hubs. But now they seem to be ramping it back up, I think in part because of the electric bike thing. And there's also been a lot of interest because of bike share and those bikes get a lot of use under really harsh conditions and internally geared hubs generally perform really well in these conditions. Now eventually I might do some more history on some of the specific internal hubs out there, especially as they develop a little bit more. You may have seen on our channel before, we did one specifically on Roloff as well as Enviolo, which are the two most popular ones in the space at the moment. Shimano has some pretty nice internal hubs, but today we're gonna to be more specifically focused on the newcomers in this space. So one of the hubs that debuted at Eurobike that's been getting a lot of attention is called 3x3. And you might be wondering what that name means, but it's three times three equals nine. It's a nine speed hub. Now this hub has 554% gear range. And for those of you not familiar, gear range basically means the difference between the lowest gear and the highest gear. Where that comes into play is you want a really low gear for going up a big hill or starting out with a really heavy load. And you want a higher gear for maintaining a higher speed or that sort of thing. The way you usually get a gear range is you would divide the largest gear by the highest gear. And it's generally a little easier to calculate this on a traditional gear system like a cassette so you could say if you have a 50 gear cog at the lowest gear in the rear and 10 at the highest gear, then you have a 500% gear range. That's the difference between the two. Now, in this case, we have a little bit more than that. Generally speaking, that's pretty large range and some of the most that you'll generally see. Kudos to them for, for doing that. It is a new company. So we'll see how it works out. This company's from Germany, which they're really focused on what they call future-oriented engineering. And one of their models is hassle-free biking because they don't want you to have to worry about cleaning your sprocket, lubricating, adjusting your gears. It's supposed to be calibrated for life, but you know, time will tell with that. It's pretty interesting. But since there's only nine gears, the steps between the gears are a little bit more extreme in comparison to say something like a roll-off hub, 
where it has 14 speeds and a similar gear range. And especially when you have an electric system, it's a little easier to make up the differences between those gears. Another thing that's interesting about this hub is that they use grease instead of oil, which some automotive applications, this is a relatively common thing. And actually some more traditional internal hubs, this be the case as well, but some of the more modern ones are quite often using oil. From what they explain, they chose grease instead of oil because there's a much longer service interval, upwards of 15,000 miles in uh, comparison to 3,000 miles on some of the, even the better performing hubs out there. From my understanding, it's a much more in-depth process as far as servicing the hub later on, but I appreciate the unique approach they're going with here. It's also rated for 250 newton meters of torque. That's pretty significant. There's actually few motors out there that are capable of even making this amount of torque. I imagine in part they're thinking about this probably for future applications that we might see more and more of, like commercial cargo. The standard shifter on the bike uses a traditional twist shifter, but you do also have the option for a wirelessly controlled e-shifter. Now, I didn't get an opportunity to test this hub, but I really look forward to checking it out. Now, the next hub on my list is a German-made six-speed hub by a company called Revolut. Their hub is called the Hub One. Now this has a 400% gear range, it's made in Germany, and it's made specifically for e-bikes. Now one of the things is they claim that they're the only hub that allows you to shift properly under a large load. It's also the only hub that uses helical gears. One of the advantages of the helical gears is that they're quiet and they distribute the pressure more along the entire tooth. Now the slight disadvantage to the helical gears is they're a little less efficient. Now this doesn't matter as much on e-bikes, but it's still something to be considered. It also, by default, doesn't spin backwards, which means that you don't roll backwards on a hill or a mountain if you're not pressing the brake. Although it does have a neutral gear. I actually didn't get to test this out, but this is kind of an interesting approach, maybe not all that different than a traditional drivetrain on an automobile. Now this is rated for 250 Newton meters of torque and they suggest changing the oil every 3,000 miles. Now the next gear system is also from Germany. It's called the Pinion system. Now this system has been around for a while but it's becoming more popular with e-bikes and recently there's been several manufacturers that have adopted it. Most notably, Stromer recently integrated this into their new ST7 bike, which is pretty nice. This traditionally uses a cable up by the handlebars, but they also have an electronic shifting version. Now it's available in a six, nine, and 12 speed version. It can shift very fast and it has an automatic start gear function, similar to the roll off where it automatically shifts down when you stop. So you can always start out in a reasonable gear. I really appreciate this function on the roll-off hub, so it's cool that they implement it here as well. All these systems so far have the gears inside of a box. This one is specifically a external gear system or more traditionally a chain and cassette. It's called the Shimano Link Glide. Now Shimano states that it should last two to three times longer than a traditional chain and cassette. And that's pretty impressive. And a lot of times people choose specifically internal hubs for their longer service life, especially if you're riding longer distances and more consistently, that sort of thing. So for those looking for the more traditional sporty feel of a chain and cassette, this is a great option. Risa Mueller is actually specking on all of their touring models going forward. So I've gotten to ride it a bit and it's really nice. It's really smooth as well because the gears are specifically made to handle additional torque. Some of the drivetrains that are not specifically made to handle the additional torque, you might have kind of a bit of a jumpy feeling for the chain. This is specifically designed to hold the chain a little bit better and to not jump around as you're shifting. Now, if you think about it, traditional chains and cassettes are generally developed for sport bikes and they'll generally have lower versions for cheaper bikes out there. And for those sport bikes, they usually optimize for weight and speed. Now, this is more optimized for durability and smooth shifting under heavy load which is what most e-bikers really want. I mean, optimizing for weight on an e-bike is not as important. And although it is certainly important to some, I think most would probably prefer durability and smooth shifting over lower weight, especially in something like a drivetrain that 
doesn't generally weigh that much anyway. Now this would be ideal for higher torque riders, electric mountain bike, could be e-cargo or commuters. Now one thing to note, I see a lot of people going more in the direction of these internal hubs in part because you can pair them with the belt drive. And a lot of people really appreciate that because it takes one other item out of the maintenance here. Now this you still will need to oil the chain and clean it more regularly. I think it's really ideal for somebody that wants that more traditional drivetrain and they like the feeling of a chain and cassette, which is nice. I mean, if you want to shift really fast and have that more sporty feeling, it's a nice way to go. Now this is available in a 10 and 11 speed in the Dior and XT. And they also have a DI2 option for those that want electric shifting. Now at this point in the video, you might be asking yourself, why don't you just combine the motor and the transmission together? And there's been companies that have tried this. It hasn't really come to fruition. It's not really mainstream just yet. There's a company called Interdrive that was showing a prototype there. We've seen a system that was out on the market for a short period from Continental where they basically combined a motor and basically the technology from the Enviolo hub together in one, but they weren't able to get enough traction. And I don't know, they decided to cut that part of the business, which is really unfortunate because they're a pretty big company. They definitely have some of the internal technology to make it work, but I guess they just didn't feel like putting enough energy behind it to actually make this happen. I, I mean, it can be kind of complex. And the thing is, I think sometimes people think like, oh, well, if you can do it for a car, like why can't you do it for a bike? And sometimes people don't really appreciate that you're working with different constraints here. You know, if you want to make it lightweight and actually pedal like a bike and feel like natural, that can be challenging. If you're not so concerned about weight or how it feels to pedal, maybe it could be a lot easier to combine the two and you're effectively just creating a motorcycle at that point. Vallejo also has an integrated system, which is pretty interesting. Now this is a pretty massive company, so they definitely have the internal resources to make this sort of thing a success. There's another company called Curvello that has their system called the Quartz. But a lot of these, you know, it seems like they take a lot to catch on traction. And if you think about it, a lot of these companies in the bike space, if you're a bike manufacturer, you really have to be thinking several years ahead. You might have an amazing new product that comes out tomorrow, but it might be several years before you even see it on the bike. And to see it at any sort of scale might take even longer than that. They may or may not be successful. And I think this is important to consider as well because, you know, you need to support this product. You know, it's not just a matter of putting a nice product out there, it's a matter of supporting it long term. That's why from our side as a shop, we generally tend to work with these more established companies that have been around for a while and I have pretty good confidence in our ability to continue to support our customers for you know, 10 plus years down the line. And I think that that's what most people expect, but they don't necessarily think about that. Well, I gotta change up the location because I found out that I had a little audio problem with the previous video. So another hub that we're seeing growing popularity is from a company called Kinderne. It's another German company and they have a 14 speed hub as well as a seven speed hub. They're rated for a lot of torque up to 160 Newton meters, which is pretty considerable. Some things that are a bit interesting about this hub, it has this like removable shell which is kind of cool. It also uses a hydraulic shifter, which is something I haven't really seen so much before. It's an interesting approach. They've also recently introduced an electronic shifter, which is pretty nice. The next drivetrain I want to talk about is not specifically designed for e-bikes, but I've already seen some electric bike manufacturers start to experiment with it. So this company, Classified, created this power shift hub. It's a two-speed electronically shifted system. And it's a reduction gear, so it's effectively the same as going from 46 teeth to 31 teeth. It's a two-speed internal hub that has the capability of accepting a cassette. So it's really designed more for people that want to get rid of their front derailleur or go from a two-by to a one-by, which is very popular. But going to a one-by, you still might limit your ability to make some bigger jumps in your gears. And then you also need to have a very large cassette, which is not so ideal for weight. In the sport side, this is a big desire and something that's becoming more popular. Now I've seen some things similar to this design in the past. SRAM had a system that it was three speeds inside and 
eight speed outside, effectively creating 24 speeds. Kind of interesting. More specifically, and like if we peel the cassette part out of it, two speed hubs, there's been a couple of different ones out there. The one that I had experimented with was just a two speed uh, automatic shifter and it's based on speed. Usually changed about 10 miles an hour. There are some others that have existed that you can use like a back pedal function. So if you just pedal backwards a little bit, it shifts into a different gear. But this one is specifically designed with electronic shifting, just shift up, shift down, and it gives you a, a pretty wide range. You know, there's so many different drivetrains out there. There's a lot to cover. We try to give like a little bit of a peek into what's going on, but if you're familiar with something else, or if you think that there's other tech that we should cover in relation to this, I'm definitely open to it. We're probably as a shop still gonna continue to focus on these big players like Roloff, NVLO, Shimano, etc. They've been around for a while. Their tech is tested. We know that we can support it long-term. Where some of the other ones, you know, I'd be interested to see where they go. I really support the idea of more innovation and this and that, but it, it can be challenging to enter this market. But overall, you know, I'm excited that there's new interest in the space of drivetrains. I think as some of the bigger players like Shimano and SRAM and Sturmy Archer kind of pulled away from the internal geared hub market a little bit, now, you know, seeing some of these other smaller players come into the space is, is a really nice thing. So I'm interested to know what you guys think. Like, what would you like to see more of? What would you like from your drivetrain that you're not necessarily getting now? As e-bikes evolve, you know, as people use them more and more for transportation, the demand for these types of products will become even greater. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in a future one. Well, take care. See you soon.